Dear learners, welcome to week 4 lecture 3. In this lecture, I shall do some more formulations or I would like to say that special cases for cell of revolutions. Generally, I have solved a problem of a cylindrical shell or very means when we have a special cases or a spherical cells or a conical cells. But uh, in the initial lectures where I said that surface of revolution, so number of shell geometries can be formed with that general formulation. So, if we are able to develop the governing equations for a cell of revolution, then those set of equations or the solutions are valid for all kind of shells which can be generated through cell of revolutions. So, in the week 3 we have developed the governing equations in a general form doubly curved shell. Then in week 4 lecture 1 and lecture 2 I have uh, derived the special cases like uh, first membrane theory of cells. So, if you see in the literature you will find that shell theories though uh, after the initial uh, formulation this can be divided into further two categories. One is uh, membrane theory, another is the moment theory. So, some problems can be solved using the concept of uh, membrane theory and some problems can be solved using the concept of moment shell theory. So, in the membrane shell theory we assume that there is no bending, no shear, only three equations comes into that, that q1 moments are need are uh, 0 and uh, only in plane stress resultants like n11, n21 and n22 plays uh, in that uh, moment of membrane shell theory. When we talk about uh, moment shell theory, in the moment shell theory that effect of bending is taken care and the moments are considered and it is slightly typical. So, already in the week uh, 4 week lectures I have explained that when do we use the membrane shell theory and when we will use the moment shell theory. So, in this lecture slightly more elaborative way first I shall explain that uh, membrane shell theory for a cell of revolution and one problem will be solved and then later the uh, formulation for a moment shell theory will be done. So, analysis of a stress structures first by a membrane theory then by a moment theory. Even that a combined analysis because in a structure you will find that some places where membrane shell theory gives accurate results and some places where we have a joints, we have a change in curvature, change in thickness at those special locations moment shell theory works. So, governing equations you see that this in the blue color this is the general when uh, for a doubly curved shell. So, equations are look like this for the case of membrane theory of cells, but if we are interested to convert into uh, uh, this uh, governing equations for cell of revolutions for that case small r is taken as r to sin phi and change of r with respect to phi will be r 1 cos phi. This already we have discussed in uh, previous lectures and uh, A1 is capital R1, A2 is small r and if we substitute all the parameters are here, then finally, it becomes the equation like this. So, uh, here in uh, membrane theory of cells, we assume that shell is very thin. So, nx theta and n theta x are considered same. So, in most of the book it is represented by s or if we can directly share uh, in plane stress resultants or we, you can directly use n12 or n21. Here alpha is phi and beta is theta. So, if we take consideration of these parameters and substitute it in this equation that leads to these three equations. So, last equation that kappa here kappa 1 n1 one, basically it is n 1 by r 1. So, 1 by r 1 can be written as a kappa and 1 by r 2 is kappa 2. So, this kappa 1 and kappa 2 are written here. So, first equation, second equation and third equation. 
for a cell of revolution. So, it is slightly different one more changes here that we use q 1 and q 2 in initial formulations, but uh, whenever I go for a book of uh, thin elastic plate and shell they have used uh, like you can say that p 1 is q 1, p 2 is q 2 and p 3 is q 3. So, uh, do not get confused that maybe sometimes I just uh, to keep uh, consistency with the literature or some books I may say that it is p 1, p 2, p 3, but do not confuse that they are same meaning as q 1, q 2 and q 3. So, these three equations are obtained last equation is called Laplace equation. So, we want to know the solution of this equation. So, the final expression. So, basically when it is written in terms of a small r you know that small r is equal to capital R 2 of sin phi. So, if you further substitute those things then final expression looks like this. So, it have some n 1 comma phi n 1 minus n 2 cotangent of phi sin phi cot phi and this third equations. So, 4.4142 and 43. So, if we substitute for from 4 point equation 3 like q k s n that n 2 by r 2 can be written as minus of p 3 minus n 1 over r 1 and again n 2 will be minus of r 2 into p 3 minus r 2 r 1 into n 1. So, we can substitute this n 2 here and here the value of n 2 in terms of n 1. So, all the equations will be in terms of n 1 to n n 1 these are the equations. Now, we can define a new variable. So, basically why we are doing these things. So, we want to convert all these three equations either in a two variable or a single variable so that we can get the solution easily. We can solve three equations no problem three equations, uh, but we need to find out uh, let us say there is some technique which is well explained in the book of uh, thin elastic plate and shells. by Theodore. So, already I have given all these things in the references. So, there it has been let us see we can assume n 1 in terms of a variable u into this and shear stress into a variable v upon may r 2 sin square 5. If we use this expression and substitute into this, so ultimately these three equations can be converted into two equations like this. So, here it is a u and v and finally, this equation 4.7 and 4.8 you say there is a two equations u and v then we can def means taking differentiation with respect to theta with first equation and this equation with respect to phi and subtracting from uh, second equation from the first gives you a single equation. So, we are able to further deduce it in terms of a single variable where u comma phi and u comma theta theta are there even v can be eliminated from those equations. Then this equation can be solved using the standard techniques and once we know the u we can find out the variable v by substituting in any uh, one of the equation and then we can find out the normal stresses and shear stresses. So, in this way we can solve the problems where f theta is a loading function and that can be represented like this. So, this is the way that cell of revolution problem is solved. So, if you substitute the real values of r 1, r 2 and phi then you can get the solution of all kind of shells which are developed using the cell of revolution. Now, there is a another case when we talk about a symmetrically loaded cell of revolution that cell of revolution basically shells are generated through the revolution. So, they are symmetric around the theta and then if we assume that loading is also symmetric for that case uh, since that is not dependent on theta. So, p 2 is 0. So, further uh, shear components n 1 and 2 1 is going to be 0. So, if this is the situation then uh, from that equation n r sin phi comma phi can be represented like this. Then if you integrate with respect to phi 
ultimately this becomes a loading function and some integrating constant comes up there. So, from here we can find out n 1 for a axially symmetric loaded where n 1 naught is the applied in plane at the boundary. So, ultimately n 1 can be represented like this. So, uh, when uh, basically it is an open uh, let us say open kind of shell when r naught is equal to b then r 2 is the principal radius of curvature at phi is equal to phi naught for the closed case. So, this terms some of the terms going to be 0. So, let us going to solve a problem like a cylindrical tank with bottom in the form of ellipsoid. You can see that here the bottom tank is made of a ellipse whereas, upper part is made of a cylindrical tank. So, it is two shells one is cylindrical shell another is a ellipsoid cell. So, our membrane solution will be valid up in these lines just at the junctions because the drastic change in curvature the solution will not be valid. So, we assume that let us say it is filled with the water or some liquid and the height of a ellipsoidal cylinder is B the length of the cylindrical cylinder is L and the vapor pressure is P naught and that distance is denoted as X naught and origin is here. So, that is cylindrical tank is filled. So, the specific weight of a liquid is gamma L. So, we can say that the total load or a total pressure is acting at any point can be represented as P star plus gamma L. First, we will discuss with the cylindrical shell and then ellipsoidal shell. So, gamma L capital L minus X star because after the X star there is uh, after this L there will be no. So, when L is to X star, so this is 0 only vapor pressure is there, but after this pressure will be follow this rule. Then the it is a cylindrical portion of a tank R 1 is infinity R 2 is R. So, the third equation that our very first equations are n 1 by r 1 plus n 2 by r 2 plus p 3 is equal to 0. So, here r 1 is infinity. So, this will not participate. So, n 2 by r plus p 3 is equal to 0 n 2 can be written as r times of this. So, it is valid for when x is equal to or greater than x star. So, distribution of n 2 for this cylindrical portion can be represented like this. So, in the previous figure that distribution of n 2 is varying linearly as L is increasing up to here, but before that it is a constant it is just equal to p star into r. So, in the diagram we can see that n 2 is constant over the cylindrical portion where hydrostatic pressure act after the force and n 2 varies linearly till the bottom of the tank. Now, we want to find out the value of n 1. So, n 1 1 can be like in the second equation because n 1 2 is 0. So, from we are substituting the value of n 2 comma theta. So, I will just go back into our first part here that s is 0 for because we are talking about x is symmetric this portion is 0. So, n 2 comma theta plus p 2. So, it will identically satisfy. So, we will directly go to the our first equation. So, n 1 can be find it out by solving this equation. So, I am directly writing that let us say n 1 1 can be represented as p star by r divided by 2 plus g sigma by 2 pi r. So, where g sigma contains two part one is g q plus g l where g q is the self weight of the tank per unit length. Generally in this case is self weight uh, in some cases if self weight is neglected then we will not consider if self weight is considered then it from x to l the q t is the self weight per unit length and d x. So, we can find out the things then g l is the self weight of the liquid filling the cylinder. So, in this way if the tank supported at the junction with the lower bottom then n 1 can be find it out p star by r minus 1 by 2 pi r 0 to x q t into d x bar. So, if q t is constant then finally, integration can be solved. So, stresses or I would like to say the circumferential this n 1 1 stress can be find it out like this and to 
So, if the tank is filled by a gas only, then the circumference force N2 is always greater than, if you remember that L2 is P star into R into some gamma something, then the meridional force. So, if we neglect the self weight, obviously it will be, if we take that QT is going to be 0, so N2 will be twice of N1. So, membrane forces. Now, we are talking that what will the stresses in the ellipsoidal portion. So, for the ellipsoidal portion, first we have to find out the total load acting in the third direction that P3 load. So, P star obviously will be there that gamma L and plus due to the cylindrical height gamma L into L. Then in the cylindrical zone that is R1 sin phi. So, that basically a length multiply it into gamma L will give you the total pressure acting on that tank. So, the principal radius of a curvature for a cell of revolution can be given in terms. So, so R1 will be R1 plus gamma 1 plus gamma sin square 3 by 2. R2 can be given as R under the root of 1 plus gamma into under the root of 1 plus gamma sin square phi, where gamma is equal to R square by B square minus 1, B is the length of a semi axis and R is the radius of a cylinder. So, in this way radius of curvature is known to us and then we can definitely find out substituting in our very first equation the value of N11 or N. So, from here this third equation. So, R1 is known to in terms of sin cos R2 is known. So, we can find out the value of N2. And ultimately the P3 can be represented like this gamma L, L minus B times of cos phi 1 plus gamma sin square theta under the root. So, if we substitute this expression using those governing equations, we have already find out these things that N1 if it is axially loading uh, case then N1 naught and so. So, present case some more terms may come up as per the loading conditions and the final expression of N1 is expressed here. So, N1 naught, R2 naught, phi naught and the volume of a ellipsoid is taken care. So, N2 and N1 is also obtained for the ellipsoidal case. So, substituting the value of actual value of R2 gamma L, we can find out the stresses in the cylindrical tank. Then finally, the final expression will look like this. So, when the slender part is transitioned, already I have explained that into ellipsoidal part, then the meridional curvature changes abruptly. So, this zone is called edge effect zone, when the cylindrical portion is connected to an ellipsible. So, this zone is called end zone. So, in this case, membrane shell theory does not give accurate results. So, we have to means our membrane shell theory is valid uh, slightly away from that zone. Now, if you see that in this zone we are not able to find out the solution and basically some high stresses or bending moments present in this zone and we should know for designing of this kind of fascial it may uh, crack from these joints. So, we have to find out the moments and couples at this joint. So, for that purpose moment theory of shells works in this field. So, it is observed that membrane theory alone cannot accommodate all the loads, support conditions and geometries in the actual cells. In general, cell of revolutions experience both stretching and bending to resist an applied loading. When distinguish significantly the bending of cells from the elementary behavior of the plate. If the cell of revolution is subjected to a concentrated load, or the boundary conditions or the, so its uh, strength affects very significantly. So, basically load carrying capacity affects when it is uh, subjected to a bending effects. So, these are some examples like a shell, though the boundaries are perfect, but uh, concentrated loads are applied. So, this will cause a bending effect and a moment effect and you see in the at the edges, these are clamped like this. So, basically flanges are there. So, this is also called a edge effect or boundary effect. Then if a structure is made of composition of two or more cell of revolutions like 
previously we have done that cylindrical shell and ellipsoidal cell now this kind of a container so the where curvature changes or thickness changes uh, this kind of bending stresses may exist if the material of the shell is ductile then bending deformation decreases away from the end and do not influence the load carrying capacity of the cell structure but if shell material is brittle like a composite then bending deformation remains proportional to the applied load and ultimately left failure so it will cause a significant decrease in the load carrying capacity that is why when we talk about a composite cell so most of the time we used to get the solution means we do not go for a generally membrane theory of cells for a moment we want to solve a complete shell equations the reason behind is that okay in the composite cells one is very basic ingredient that material properties changes abruptly like from layer to layer it changes so this change in material property and position ratio is different so cause uh, deformation so due to that the bending may take place if it is uh, made of a uh, isotropic material then this issue is not there means delamination may take place so for the case of a composite cell preferably is that we try to solve all the complete equations we don't simplify only just using the moment shell theory or the membrane shell theory so we even the add the interfaces at the edges and even these problems are further uh, i would like to say that uh, enhances or amplifies for the case of a composite cells. So, in this case the governing equation alpha is phi, beta is theta and basically I would like to drive first set of governing equations for the moment theory of cells and then its solution. So, for the case of cell of revolutions these parameters are known to you. So, first we will find out the linear strain displacement relations for the present case. So, these are the strain displacement relations for cell of revolutions. Then the governing equations, the very first governing equation, second governing equation, third governing equation, four governing equation and fifth governing equations. So, these 5 governing equation which contains all the variables, all moments on in plane stress resultants for the cell of revolutions. In the previous case for when we are talking about the membrane theory of cells, we have neglected the moments and shears. But now we have taken all the variables together and substitute the value of R means R1, R2, A1, A2 and this equations look like this. Now using the cell constitutive relations and mathematical simplification it reduces to so basically from here that q2 can be expressed like this and q1 is expressed like this. So, substituting back into the first three equations it reduces to three partial differential equations. So, a closed form solutions can be obtained for such cases. Again it is very difficult, so more complex. So, in the most general case is the cell of revolutions under axis symmetric load case where that displacement along second direction is 0 and n 1 2 and q 2 and m 1 2 is 0. So, if we assume such cases, so these three equations reduce looks like this and the constitutive relations for the isotropic case we can write like this, but you are aware that for the case of a composite that n 1 can be written as minus h by 2 2 plus h by 2 if it will be sigma 1 1 1 plus zeta by r 2 into d zeta. So, sigma 1 1 is basically q 1 1 into epsilon 1 1 plus q 1 2 into epsilon 2 2. So, that can be taken care for the elastic case n 1 n 2 m 1 m 2 can be written like this. So, where chi 1 and chi 2 are basically the curvature part of the strain displacement relations. Here the for the present case axis symmetric case again further simplified e 1 e 2 chi 1 and chi 2 and the a new variable is taken as that v 
which is u1 by r1 1 by r w comma phi. So, here we have 3 equations are here, 4 equations are here, 7 and we have 5 equations are here. So, we have now 12 equations and then uh, this further can be written in terms of actual component n1, n2, m1, m2 by substituting all these things one can see that u comma phi minus w u cot phi minus w and so on. So, these parameters are further written like here. So, we have now two displacements u and w, five stress resultants n1, n2, q1, q2, m1, m2. So, basically we have taken q2 is 0. So, we have now 1, 2, 3. So, 4 this and 5 strains. So, 5 plus 2, 7, 7 and these are 5. 12 variables. So, now we have a 12 equations, 12 variables we can solve set of equations. So, there are number of ways either you I think in the fifth week of the lecture I will explain that if you substitute this n1, n2 all these things into the basic governing equation. So, these 3 governing equations can be expressed in terms of primary displacement variables u v and uh, u w and capital V. So, these will be expressed like that. So, 3 equations can be solved partial differential equations. So, one solutions can be obtained if it is based on the boundary conditions. So, the solutions can be expressed in terms of a trigonometric series or a power series or some other kind of a series and the solution is obtained. So, from those solutions that sigma 1 max and sigma 2 max is represented here that n1 plus h plus 6 times m1 by h2, n2 by h plus 6 times m2 by h. So, in this way the stresses are obtained. Now, as I said that there are number of ways. So, we are assuming a some other variables let us say v1 and u is equal to r2 into q, q is a function of a theta. So, there q1 is 0. So, substituting this variable into that equations. Uh, these 3 equations ultimately converted into 1 equation. So, basically n 1 sin q 2 cos phi can be represented like this. If we integrate with respect to phi that leads to this equations where f is the uh, loading parameters. And from here n 1, n 2 can be written like this. So, finally, by doing some mathematical simplifications ultimately n 1 and n 2. So, it leads to a uh, ultimately two parameter that v and u, u is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, basically these two simultaneous equations look like this, this is the value and this is the operator differential operator and we can solve such kind of a system. So, the purpose of describing these thing is here that if we get the n 1 and n 2. So, by substituting the value of radius of curvature r 2 and the loading parameter and the value of u, u is nothing but r 2 into q 2. So, we can get the expression of n 1 stress resultant in first direction expression of stress resultant in second direction and similarly, once you are able to solve these stress resultants u, v u then definitely using the back those things we can get all the moments and then we can get all the basically first we will get the strains then we will get the moments. So, with this the basic methodology is explained here, but when you are going to solve a problem. So, depending upon the boundary conditions f 5 will be different loading parameter the rest of the equations will remain same in week 5 basically lecture 1 I shall explain the complete formulation from the scratch that for a cylindrical infinite shell or a finite shell what should be the governing equation what are the solution techniques. So, but in this lectures the basic equations generally in terms of a stress resultants there are some problems in the shell theories that they can be directly solved using the same stress resultant equations, but 
in general if we are able to convert into a primary displacement form this that is the more general form we can solve all kind of a problem. So, general approach is that we try to convert into a primary displacement form and then get the solution for that after that we can get the stress resultants. So, with this I would like to end this lecture here. Thank you very much.